Good luck. All right, we've got Senta here. So uh, I would like to attempt to play uh, Central Fire Rock. We'll see how we do on this. Oh, um, yeah, this does not change my strategy. We're going to still go for it. Because Central Fire Rock games are exciting and explosive and full of fireworks so that that's kind of uh the mood i feel like playing right now just see like can we get all the pieces exchanged in into both players hands and see whose king is still stuck in the center of the board when things blow up sounds fun um so there, this thing always confuses me, and it shouldn't confuse me this much every time, but let's play the rook to the center, so now our bishop and our rook are active. Let me check that my stream layout is good, stream layout looks fine. All right, so... Yeah, let's also make sure that I don't drop this pawn. Um, yeah, get the silver out while I still can. And expect that this silver might come up the left side of the board. Um, let's get my king out of here before something goes horribly wrong. Silver up, silver up, silver up, silver up is playable. But then they can take aim here, so maybe it's best... Oh. A rapid Yagra. Okay. Let's see if they are going to counter this pawn push with a pawn push of their own. Or might they be intending to dive their king into the corner, and we could have a fun game of a different sort here. Um, we'll ask, are you really committed to diving your king into the corner of this Anaguma castle? Because if you are, I've got a silver with your name on it. Um, All right. Oh, that's right. If this comes out this way, I can use the silver to oppose, and they could exchange here, but that's fine. Um, uh, 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 uh. Uh, okay, I said that I wanted to see some fireworks, but did I really mean it? Hmm. How interested in fireworks am I? I think I'm pretty serious, because, like, the bishop's right here, the king's right there. If I could get my rook to join this attack, boy, we could have a fun game here. We wouldn't want to miss that chance now, would we? Now, the one ch problem is that my king is very prone to a bishop check over here. That's actually kind of a problem. Um, but is this kind of a problem? Hmm. Hmm. I think I should wait until I have a pawn in hand before doing anything too rash. But this probably won't take more than one move, because probably they're going to push this pawn, and we're going to have some fun. Yeah, this way I'm less prone to a bishop check, but also less prone to, like, if my gold moves, I could, like, build Cozy Castle or something and dive out of here. Um, did I just let them promote? Am I an 
am I an idiot? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Oh, well, this will be fun. I should have... I don't know. Well, we got the pawn. We're going to have a pawn in hand in just a second. Um, the question is, whose king is more prone at this point? Oh, my silver serves a useful role protecting this pawn before they promote their silver over here. All right, I can see that. Um, hmm. I did say I wanted fireworks. This might be just a touch too explosive for me. Alright, whatever. We're just going to build a castle and assume everything's fine. It's fine. We don't need to care about who killed whose father. Things like that. So. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. It's fine. It's all fine. Um... Uh, do I go back one square or two? How cowardly am I today? I think one is correct. This does impede my rook's ability to protect the rank. Um... Do I just ignore it? Do I take it? I don't know. If I just ignore it, then they get to promote multiple tokens, but I get to activate my knight. If I take their silver takes, they have a pawn in hand, and I'm not so concerned about them having a pawn in hand. Um, more concerned that the silver supports um, them promoting here. I don't know, man. Do I just bring the bishop out, let them promote? I can promote and let the games begin. That sounds fun. That could be worthwhile. So what about pawn takes, silver takes, and I do, do this anyway? Then, well, even though they get a pawn in hand, they can't use the pawn to block. Um, yeah, I don't think it matters one way or the other if I exchange pawns here. But presently, I'm the only player with a pawn in hand. <sighs> um... I'm going to need some pawns to break this. I'm going to need some pawns to break that. Um, yeah, I don't like this so much, but I think it's fine. So we've got two pawns in hand. Um... We're going to put our bishop on the second best square. So first best would be on this diagonal. Second best is over here, where we have an obvious shot at the rook. Um, the rook's going to move, and I don't know what's going to happen next. Right, so I had intended, or been half intending, to move my silver if they did pretty much anything other than this. But, since they did this, I could consider pushing the center pawn instead. Um, yeah, I. this will be fun. I have not read all this out. What I have read is that my bishop is free again. And that I'm threatening to promote right here, pretty close to the king. 
and that my silver can quickly join this attack. Uh, if they're moving this, I hope they protect their rook. Oh dear. Um, well, how to resolve this tension? Like, I want my attack. I don't want a rook. I want an attack. That's the whole reason we did this. We didn't do this with the aim of taking a rook. Oh, I'm going to take the attack here. But if they hang that again, well, what can we do? How many times can I not take this rook and still be proud of what I'm doing? I don't know. I think we have to take it now. Um, that stings. That wasn't me setting up like a trap. That was me saying, I want my bishop promoted and taking this lance and knight and stuff. This rook was just accidental. Um, yeah. Alright, so... How do I proceed now? So their bishop is blocked. Those gold is loose. Let's combine both of those facts and activate my rook while pursuing this bishop that's blocked. So, yeah. Uh, I'm forced to move my rook. Let's move it. All right. I guess if I were trickier, I would have played pawn 5-5 five five first. And that way if this capture... Well, then my rook can't take the gold. Yeah, I debated playing pawn 5-4 uh, instead. To try to force the gold to move away and then we could like pin it or something. Or I debated a rook drop here and then trying to use a pawn to chase it down and win it. But like here I'm pursuing the bishop and pursuing the king. Um, yeah, this game didn't turn out, um, I don't know. I did want an explosive game. Um, I was spending my time, I think we both got a bit excited by what transpired here. And so now, um, yeah, we just have this unfortunate ending. Our end game. So if they do take the lance, I can drop a pawn on five five to uh, cut their bishop out of their castle. Again, I'm trying to figure out how to pursue this king. The king's the goal here. It's not all these pieces. It's the king that I want. Right. So if I play a pawn 5-5 five five to try to cut the gold out, that doesn't do much here, actually. Um, how to proceed here? Like, I could take a lance, but what would I do with the lance? Uh... Like, they have things they could do with the lance. Why don't I? <laughs> Is there... Why do I not see something useful for a lance? I'm not sure. Um, 
Oh, this is a target, but I only have a lance to hit it. Okay. So, yeah, I should be pursuing um, this gold on the back row. This is the weakest point of the castle right now. So this should be my target. Right, and they place a lance to strike back against all of this, which makes sense. Um... Well, I could exchange my Rook for Lance and Gold while continuing to attack, but um, there must be better. Well, I don't know. It's fine. Well, I don't... Hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess... I don't really want to take this pawn, because that would encourage them to drop a pawn further down here. Um, so I want to see them block this check somehow. Although, I guess, racing up with the king I'm fine with too, but um, if I understand how they're blocking, I can target whatever is in the way. Um, wait, this is a horse. So I can't do horse takes silver, because, like, that's not how it moves. Um, yes, yeah, so I should take this here, so I can drop that to break in here. Oh, moving this lance could be fatal. Maybe. Feels like it'd be fatal, right? I mean, it's a powerful move, but um, two can play that game. Alright, so wait, this horse protects this corner. I need to be careful not to do something overtly stupid here. Uh, so... If I offer this, ugh, yuck, I never completed my castle. I got so excited about the prospect of attacking. And rightly so, but still. Uh, how do I seal off this king? Is the lance really the piece I need? I don't think so. Um. They'd say don't run from a fork, because there's always something better to do than running from the fork. But if we don't run, then what? Where does that leave us? What's the better move? Oh, knight drop. If pawn takes, dragon takes, king takes, gold drop. And I have another golden hand threatening mate. That looks pretty nice. 
Yes, yeah, so knight drop. Ask the question, what are they going to do about my knights? Uh, yeah, that looks absolutely crushing. Let's do it. So I pointed out earlier that this horse protects this corner here, 2-2. Two, two. Well, that's only if there's not a piece on 4-4. Four, four. If there's a piece on 4-4, four, four, then what's protecting 2-2? Two, two? Well, the king. The king's protecting 2-2. Two, two. Hmm. Is that the correct piece to be defending itself? Like, so that now empowers me to sack to take this gold out, then drop that gold here, and I still have a golden hand to mate on the left or on the right. So, yeah, that's kind of an issue. King's got to run. Hmm. Honestly, that's one of my better sacrifices ever. I kept fixating on, like, do I want to drop a pawn on 5-5? Five five? And, yeah, even pawn 5-5 five five would have been nice, but this knight drop forces the king out. And the entire castle collapses behind the king. Um, so, yeah, the next logical move is I take your gold general. And I just keep attacking. And I guess you can return the favor, sure. I'm not too concerned about that. Um, maybe I should be, but I'm just not. So then I think gold drop here, unless I have mate somewhere, gold drop here seems like the next step. Oh, if I take this, yeah, this mates. That's cool. Let's do that. All right, and then silver drop on the edge. Something like this. It was an exciting game, for sure. Oh boy. What a tournament. Thanks for the game. Well played. Oh yeah, this it's quite a tournament. Uh, they say summer shogi, but man, we have some exciting games this summer. Uh, whoo! <laughs> wow. Central Fabric is always good fun. <laughs> but yeah, that was one hell of a sack at the end. I didn't expect things to turn out quite this way, but in retrospect, maybe it makes sense. Um, so, I know they must have been quite excited by uh, this turn of events. Uh, 
<laughs> Carnivorous Toad appears. Yeah. Oh boy. That night 4-4 four four drop was good fun. Um, I shouldn't get completely absorbed in that, because like there was the rest of the game too. They accidentally sacked the rook. Uh, sure, so I guess we'll take a look from the beginning. And that was such a game. And it's fine if they don't aren't able to do the analysis with us. Either way, it's fine. I get this is not the teaching ladder, so the standards are a bit different. Um, so we'll see what they think. Ah. Um, uh, suppose I can try that. Uh, presently I lack a headset, but we can give it a shot. Just need to be careful uh, with the audio balance here. But I think we could maybe make that work. Um, oh goodness, my speakers are a bit loud here. So, yeah, let me see if I hop onto Discord. I don't know how we're even going to arrange... Oh, I'm sorry, I have an idea how we arrange this. Yeah, so we do have a private conversation, so we could just try to do the call on the conversation. Yeah, let's give it a shot. Let's see how this goes. Hey, good, good evening. Let me see if I can hear your audio. Yeah, this is always a bit tricky to get set up. Um, all right, uh, I don't know if I can hear you now or what. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Let me turn this up just a touch more so I can hear you properly. All right, how's it going? <laughs> it's going all right. Well, that's good fun. Yeah. Right. Successfully uh, played my first match of the tournament because that's how this is, that's how this ended up going. Oh yeah, I remember we had like an odd number of players, so we had yep. some pretty interesting pair. Yeah, I had a. <laughs> No show, no show first, first game, game and then the buy. buy. And so I'm like, okay, okay I, guess, I guess I guess this will be my first match. match. Oh goodness. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah, I guess next time we'll try to get more people to sign up. Yeah, well I got a few moving regionally, so hopefully we'll get them in soon. Oh good, good. Uh, yeah, where do you want to pick off? Um, let's see. I think you gave uh, I'm trying to remember if you gave me the host here or not of this. Yeah, you you've, you've got, got the wheel. wheel. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I guess we'll pick it up from the beginning here. Uh, kind of like what we do with the teaching ladder, where we just start the analysis from the beginning, just let people have their thoughts throughout. Um, yeah. I know I've had a tendency to play, like, every swinging rook opening ever, so uh, my, I, my knowledge I, is kind I, of shallow. It's all good. I, I mean, that was part of the Blessed Curse. I'm just like... What am I getting into? And it was like, well, it's gonna, it's gonna be, be some, some kind of, of it's gonna be some kind of uh, ranging rook. And I'm like, it's gonna be third file, it's gonna be central, it's gonna be fourth. I don't know which of those you actually do. Obviously central, which was the case for today. <laughs> yeah, I've, like I've done a few streams before where I've done uh, central file rook quite a bit. On Shogi Wars, it seems to be quite successful. Just the uh, the Q players on Shogi Wars don't seem to know it so well, so. Yeah, there it makes for really exciting games. Here I don't always get to play it, but um, it's fun to play. Because, uh, like, when this pawn does advance, uh, crazy stuff happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I see that you're playing the static rook here, so that's pretty nice. Um, and like I said, my opening knowledge here is always shallow. I'm always having to read out, like, where is the silver going to go? Is it going to go to the left? Is it going to go, like, chase my bishop up this way? I can never 
remember all this. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, my my idea was to always go on the right, but I'm just like, well, well I, definitely I definitely need to start, start doing, doing some central defending, defending because if yeah, because yeah, things, things get exciting as soon as you push the pawn. So I uh, halfway by putting it at the uh, at the like the six yeah. two. That that makes sense, and I know like one thing that got impressed upon me quite a bit um, was. Uh, during the opening, you have to balance the notion that I want to attack on one side of the board, but also I have to build a castle somewhere. And, yeah, it's hard to remember to do both of those things. I've had a number of teaching ladder games with a number of different opponents where we just both forget to castle and things get pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah, um. I, I, I went into this game assuming that I was either going to end up with like a boat, a boat castle, castle or, or if, if somehow, somehow I could get, get away, away with it, it was just gonna roll into like an Anaguma but uh, did, did not did, did not, not get, get there because I thought, thought my attack, attack was working <laughs> ah, I see yeah yeah so we both started uh, like you said you were intending either to put uh, the king in the boat here or you'd also uh, in just a couple moves later around here we're suggesting well maybe this is your actual intent too mm -hmm. yeah because so. yeah. otherwise i would have pushed the uh, edge pawn so i wanted to right the the uh yeah. the giveaway yeah. center on that one yeah um and like so i i play swinging rook basically all the time i don't really know how to prevent building anaguma castle i need to study this more but I, I do know one part of it is I've got to, like, bring out my bishop and silver and such and just, like, have everything ready to target uh, this edge here. Um, I don't know exactly the right way to, the right move order to build something, but I think around here would be my target if you were to go ahead and try that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just brought up my silver making some threats saying please don't build this castle because i'll have to figure out how to attack it <laughs> yeah uh so yeah you continue your attack here and i'm like okay well i better defend this but also i better continue building my castle in case something crazy happens and i want to make sure like a rook drop or bishop drop doesn't end my game here um so yeah, this attack looks quite reasonable to me. It, like, I probably needed to stop this, and I'm not sure how I stop that in this move order. I've probably missed something. I I don't know. Yeah, I think what was I? The one thing I was uh, it wasn't quite here. Um, because I don't. Yeah, I don't. I mean, at this point with your with your silver up shore, there isn't really anything you can do on the right side for a sort of like oblique silver. Oh, no, that's a good point. Maybe, like, maybe I could have waited for this, and then if that happens, I could put this up here instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause maybe. Because as, as soon as you're, as soon as you're on the, on the, the sort of the centerfold there, then I'm. Yeah. Because at that point. Now, now you're, you're actually, actually up. up so and i can't i'd have to either like get my silver all the way around or like you know because like on the center you have yeah. the numbers on the right you would then have the numbers um i mean like yeah i don't i wouldn't really know what yeah to no, do in it. now that you mention it that that does sound familiar that yeah committing my silver up this way means I'm committed to an attack, and maybe I'm not ready for that just yet. So, yeah, I think you're right. That, like, this, having played this up, now I can't move it to the left here. Um, so, yeah, this signals that we're, uh, we're in the midst of a mutual attack now. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was my, I was like, I wanted to, ultimately wanted to attack from that right side, but I'm like, well, well I should I also... Probably defend the center since that's where every single one of your pieces is pointing. Uh, so the beacon is lit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it, it's tricky because, yeah, definitely you're 
I mean, the center is where a lot of activity is going to happen. Uh, some other games, like I, let's say we just build the boat or something like this. And some other games, I've actually made the mistake of pushing this pawn too early. And that then, is like, bad for you on the exchange if you go early, right? Yeah, and even if this pawn were defended somehow, there's not really a benefit to pushing it right away. Um, it took me a while to understand this, but like the the this they called a vanguard pawn, and it gar it does overlook the square in front of it here. Um, and the idea is that it, later on, once I built a castle, once I have all of my pieces lined up behind this, and I'm ready to launch this massive attack, that would be the right timing to push this. Um, and when that lands, then suddenly the, the bishop line opens up, the rook becomes more active, whatever other pieces I have in the fray can all join too. And then this pawn that's advanced threatens to promote right away. So like the so I've pushed this in the opening quite a few times too early and learned, uh, paid the price a few times just that like, Okay, it's exciting to activate my bishop, but I really need like all the rest of my pieces in this attack too. So I think you've got time to build whatever it is you want to build before I push this. Uh, yeah, so, I almost so. wonder, wonder if this main would have been the point where rather than rather than marching up the uh, rather, rather than going than in and marching this up, I almost wonder at this point if I once I did this and felt like I could get away with it, I probably could have just actually finished my castle before. I did also, I did also think, think about, about going, going to the right. right. Yeah. And just doing it that which if you especially if you had left your uh your silver pack would have probably been the better route to go because then I got all this room um that I could you know, that I could go in rather than uh but this this thing wasn't even put my edge palm wasn't pushed up yet either, so it was kind of a a slow burn on that side, but I almost wondered, especially like I said, I'm like, I wonder if I almost should have just started going for the, uh, going for the Anaguma at this point. If I was gonna, if I was, if I had committed to not doing it earlier. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, like, so I've always played Swinging Rook, I don't really know what castle to recommend, although the boat is a really nice shape, so I guess I do recommend it. Anaguma's a nice shape, so I recommend that too. But uh, yeah, I probably most of uh, so I'm also live streaming the game here. Probably most of the people viewing this probably are more familiar with uh, static rook castles than I am. Yeah. But um, See, yeah. all three people that I, I tend to play with are all ranging rooks. I'm just the I'm the weirdo that plays the the common red the thread somehow. <laughs> somehow I found all the all the ranging rook players. So I'm like. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, let's see. Um, but yeah, had you played this, like what I was focusing on at the moment is, okay, I know I've been making all these little threats, but, and the good news with building this way is that like you're keeping open your options of do you build the silver or which way is this going to advance? You keep this, these options open. You keep open whatever other castling uh, building options you want. Like it's very f more flexible this way than if you move the silver up. Yeah. Um. I think so. I think I definitely should have just so just finished that off. Before. Yeah, probably. Yeah, starting to build that. Like what I was thinking about is that I'm just gonna like complete my castle. Um, I wasn't sure where my rook was gonna go. Up, um, but. Yeah, I had to figure out what to do next. Um, but definitely these were the next few moves I had just like queued up in my mind here. Ah, got some fun ideas here too from uh, Lily. That's awesome. Yeah. Ah, yeah, so Silver could move up and attack. Uh, yeah, this can join the attack in the center of the board. Um, and... Yeah, I think one thing I've seen before is this, per, I forget if this is Kimuramino or something, but, um, so, like, this idea that I could, like, play this silver up and this gold out, so this 
these silvers can join together and try to pursue something in the middle. I don't recall the name of this shape, but this might be something I consider. I don't know. Uh oh, oh wow! This gold could yeah. I know I've advanced the gold up to the left before, but that's interesting. You could also join the center to try to defend things. That makes some sense. Yeah, and the rook down. I've certainly seen that shape before here too. Um, but okay, yeah. This so I guess the gold could go uh, up to six six or such. That's cool. Sorry, let me briefly check. Uh, I know Lily's trying to help us with our analysis here. Yeah, so... Yeah, it was quite the exciting game against Central Rook. Uh, usually move up the bishop. Usually. And put the silver... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Kim Raminos. Okay, I did have that right. Yeah. But yeah, we ended up with quite an exciting game regardless, that's for sure. Um, yeah. So yeah, I started to suggest I still want to build my castle, and you just went ahead because that's a strong, powerful attack. Yeah, Lily indicates also frequently part of this would be the Rook. Um, it's easier to promote on this line than on the line it's currently on. Um, so this tends to make uh, this attack on the third file more powerful. Especially yeah. given where I never ended up promoting that thing, which would have been good because also it would have been out of the way from what its and its final fate was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's it's eventual oblivion. Yeah, that's it's most unfortunate. I I've, I was not aiming for a cheapo. It's just no, that's. You, 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 I mean, I had time. I there's no there's no excuse for it. Yeah. I had, so I had, yeah, this I is. Had the time, I had the time to read that out. <laughs> Just like yeah. Oh, yeah, he's he's uh he's getting out of the way, and then I'm like yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, oh, yeah. I, I've done the same way. thing before. It's good fun, and they're like, uh oh, well, damn. Um, but yeah, the more typical would be just bring the rook out this way because this attack could be pretty forceful. Um and uh yes, uh, Lily had indicated usually this bishop move and. Uh, try to, um, well, usually it'd be up here and the rook would be able to swing over to try to pressure this back, but, um, we ended up in an unusual situation just how this ended up. Um, yeah, I, that, I, that was, was the one right there, right there where there, I, right. I, when I took with the silver there, where it's like, I mean, yes, kind of. I don't. I almost I don't, don't think, think I should, I should have, have even just gone for that. Because then, then at this, this point, point, as soon as I did that, that, my stupid silver's in the way, um, which is all the more reason probably for that original move of the uh, of the rook out of the way. Because I'm just sitting here going like, well, uh, this space, uh, this space is. How do I do? There we go. Uh, that space is just terrible because. Bishops, bishops there, there the knights, knights there, there, and then, so I'm not like, like not getting anywhere, anywhere there, there, but also, you know, have to, it would take me multiple turns to get my silver out of the way to promote. Yeah, and it's funny, like this opening, I was so anxiously thinking, gosh, I really want to take here and try to chase this bishop, and then like, a little later, it dawned on me, hang on, this silver is actually serving a really powerful role defending this pawn as well as preventing your bishop from doing anything. So yeah, the silver is just like optimally placed, so I could just have all my other pieces run away and pretend this isn't happening. Yeah, no, yeah. I think you're totally right as well, Lily. I probably should have just sacked the silver because it would have been more valuable for me to... I mean, it's not even sacked, it's just, I should have just traded it because at that point I could have promoted my rook, which ended up being the... the yeah. Like, um... I didn't, didn't want to... <laughs> But it's probably the point. And... Yeah, um, I mean, the other thing that occurred to me is, like, this early in the game, a, a bishop and a rook are similar in value. Although your castle, as you've built it so far, is kind of vulnerable to a rook drop. Um, That's the, that was the bit where, uh, you know, 
the fact that I didn't finish my castle before the attack basically did just say like as soon as as soon as you got a rook in, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> and I don't have an escape route still because uh there's an idiot part of my brain that was like uh you know, oh well I could still go for Anaguma even though like, you know, literally past probably past that point in the in the rodeo. Yeah, yeah, I, I've had a couple of games where I've done that, and I'm like, wait, I still have time for this, and I spend the next, like, half hour, hour or something, realizing, oh, this is just not working at all. <laughs> so, yeah, in the opening, you definitely have to remember to complete some kind of a castle. It might not be something fancy, but yeah, have something built. Here, I didn't even get a chance to complete my. Right now, I have two pawns in hand. That's all I've got. I know it looks like I'm threatening a lot of things, but it's going to take me a, a minute to actually build any kind of an attack here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this attack you're doing is very swift, very powerful, but um, still need to build the castle. And, yeah, I promise, like, here I wasn't yeah, going yeah. for the cheapo. I was just, like, aiming for the lance here, <laughs> really. No, I was thinking, it was like... <laughs> I, my, uh, my brain, brain was like, well, I can't promote the rook yet, so clearly it's not time to move the rook. And <laughs> honestly, should have just probably just, like, just brought the rook over and just been like, okay, that out of the way. <laughs> or, yeah, I would started to I think mean, of... Or, or yeah. like, yeah, I don't know, almost literally even could have just... Like, I don't need it over here really anymore, other than the fact that I probably want to promote it. Like, I could have almost even just, like, brought it back. Yeah, this is interesting. Um, I figured that either way this rook moves, like, it's going to have a hard time promoting. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I guess, in my mind, like, the top priority for you here is pick the square for the rook, where later the rook's going to be able to be active. Um... I'm not sure that, like, behind the pawns actually works that well here. Like, no, potentially you're talking maybe about something like aiming here or bringing yeah, your that, rook that, up that, even. That, that move we talked about earlier, yeah. Of, like, if it was just in the... If it was just literally in the seventh rank the whole time, it would have just been like... Wait, yeah. rank? Am I remembering correctly? Yeah. Rank file? No. That's file. Seventh file. Ah, oh, right, right. There we go. I can I got my... I have my, uh... I, uh, my uh, my age in shogi isn't showing, um, but if I had had it there, then literally this uh, pawn would have been like I could have been a, I could have actually just been like push the silver, push the pawn, and just yeah, yeah. So like that's a possibility, or maybe even here, I don't know. But like, and so I was reasoning. Okay, I maybe get to take a lance, or if you defend the lance, I get to maybe promote here. I was yeah. still pretty nervous, because, like, you are actually starting to promote, you have a pawn in hand, you'll be able to place that and promote it. I still haven't completed any castle yet, so... Yeah, um, yeah this... I wasn't super comfortable with my attack, but I had to do it, so... Yeah. yeah. And I almost would have been, again, without the, without the silver there, then, like, even me just going here would have been fine, fine. because then, then I could have at least... least traded on we could have exchanged right there yeah it bad because i didn't finish my castle uh so the rook drop giving you the rook either way was going to be a bad time uh but yeah that silver the the, the mid silver just doing work on the defense yeah and i guess by itself like or i'm sorry early in the opening it this silver advance could be quite powerful because like i might have a bishop over here i might have rook over here but, like, right now, the distance between these two is pretty high. Uh, yeah, it's quite a walk for the silver to threaten anything. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, obviously the mistake, the big error happened pretty soon hereafter. Um, but, yeah, then we tried to recover from that, and that makes sense. This I like this drop. Um, yeah, it seems like forcing me to move away from the castle for a bit, or if I'm, I don't know, more spirited, maybe I take the lance, but uh, I just couldn't see that working. Yeah, I was just like, I, my, like, 
thought train was basically just yeah, it was exactly yeah, just like if I put, put a pawn, pawn there, there, then you just back, back up, up or yeah, I was trying to force you to select like you have an option later of placing a pawn like way up here somewhere yeah, or just, down like, there. Because I had the you know the the you know the attack situation later, which is that I you know drop a pawn at yeah you know, at like f at like uh like you know five eight there, and it's like so I was like, well I don't want to use my piece, um, and then yeah you got out of the way, and then I don't know that it was correct to do it because I'm like I should have just dropped. It. If I was going to be weird, which I, I don't think I had the, I don't think I had the bandwidth to get away with trying to attack in this particular juncture, uh, but like definitely don't think this next move where I, where I like soldiered the lance up was the right was the right move. Oh, um. Because it's I, just like oh I can at least. Maybe I can start threatening to take some golds, and then I can put those in defense because uh, all my pieces are terrible at defending themselves right now because they're all. And the whole time I'm worried this whole time about literally anything you, any as soon as like anything drops below the silver, because uh, you already had the knight and gold. I'm just like, it's a bad time. Uh, but I think of all the things I could have done with my free, effectively free move. Uh, that was probably not it. Well, I don't know. I, I thought that this defense was actually really well done. I was, in, like, we saw my timer start to tick down more and more because I was actually quite confused how to break this. Um, yeah. Like, if your king had somewhere to run, this would be an opportunity to plan, like, an escape hatch for the king. But, like, I have a gold in hand, so this king doesn't actually have anywhere to run. Yes, yeah, I can't go here because... Going up, you just do the drop. Yeah, and, and just incidentally, this horse is just a monster, and I'm like, well, gosh. Um, I was considering, like, at some point I might want to drop a pawn on 5-5 five five just to, or maybe even, this should have occurred to me during the game, this would have been nice. If I just put a pawn here, this would have been so much easier for me to break in, but... Um, but yeah, while this is in the corner, it's controlling so many squares that I'd love to use. Um, yeah, I almost yeah. think I probably... I almost wonder if I still should have... Yeah, because it... Like, with it, with these kind of defending themselves at the moment while I still have points here, like, if I had gone here and you did the gold drop... I mean, I still have the defense that I have the bishop, which effectively was doing nothing. Um, other than... Because it was holding that line down. Uh, uh, which, which I, think I think at the point, point where you were here. Sorry, I should give you back the hat here so I can see what you're talking oh, about. No worries. Um, when I was looking at at this point, so I did, you know, doing a doing of stuff uh, here. Yeah. Whether that was the thing to do or not, but like at this point later in the thinking, I'm like I probably almost should have just done this. Because, yeah. Like, like it, it was, was, it was gonna, gonna be bad, bad either way, way but, but I think because as soon, I knew as soon as the king, king moved, you just march right, right in, and then, and then at that, that point, point it's just how many golds can you pick up and place down. down. I probably should have just sacked the bishop here to at least, you know, you then take, and then, you know, at this point at least, I have outs. Well, so that's the funny thing is, truthfully, like, I agree with you, this probably is the strongest defense, but also I don't think it holds. Yeah. Because I think it's the same situation. So, I'm still, yeah. You're still gonna have to, still gonna have to bail. You're still gonna drop. Oh, yeah, it's true, because now the pawn's just in the way. Yeah, now I've got a bishop. <laughs> that's true, too. Uh, yeah, because then at this point, it's like, well, it's like, yeah. And then, uh, but then you're still just taking this. Right. And then, you know, what? Like, ouch. But at this point, you just, you have two golds in hand. It's just, yeah. You just march, you just march the line. That... Yeah, there, there has to be a mate somewhere. Yeah. So, I yeah. Really, like, I think this is actually just literally a mate at that point. So, yeah. So I think he. So, like, yeah, that, that certainly was what I was expecting here, but also I was pretty 
confident that I still had yeah. something. Yeah, and I I didn't think I could move back because then you just do the gold drop. Right. And then that, and then I can't. I'm pinned, so that's just dead. That's just mate. So I think that was the only option there. And at this point, it's just there's just, there's, there's there's three promoted uh, there's three promoted just absolute shiny pieces. Uh, it's probably it's it's probably dead at the at that point in the water. Oh, yeah, wow. That's funny, like, so, yeah, during the game, I did, uh, yeah, the the way the game played out, um, what was it? So, yeah, I placed the silver, and then, um, the king advanced, and I missed, I had this, like, this, uh, wait, let's, oh, wait, that's not quite mate, though, I, so I should lead with the gold here. This would be more elegant because it keeps more. I mean, it's not yeah, an no. ideal mate, but it shows sure. like I didn't need these two pieces in hand to do it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But yeah. You had yeah you had uh. You had a good. I mean, even just like. The, just the literal gold. Like even aside from that, just the gold drop does it. Like any any two pieces from your selection of what you had at that point was. Was was the game so? I'm yeah. Not, so I guess it just comes down to like, would I? Yeah. What did I? Like keep this a keep this an active game by just not losing this side. Yeah. Point, my attacking pieces are as far away as mechanically possible, and then you're promoted to heck, and then I can't even capture pieces, which was the other bit, right? Because like. All my attacking pieces can't get any material, so it's not even like I can just like bulldoze my way and then drop them. Yeah, it's them. it's kind of funny. This game kind of has this judo like feel to it, where like I've even let you break in, and like somehow it's still fine. Uh, or like I've fallen over backwards to just let you in, and but I have some counter threats and like. Yeah, I don't know. I guess the time management is a bit tricky, but um, but yeah, balancing between attack and defense. Uh, yeah, if you have a decisive attack, go for it. But if you don't have a decisive attack and you're not sure what to do, just make sure to also complete some kind of a castle. I know I was working on that. I never quite finished it here, but uh, but yeah, building the castle when you're not sure what to do can help. Um, I don't know, guide you forward. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's good. Well, awesome. Well, thanks again for the game. Yeah, glad to play it. I was actually quite impressed by my own night sack here, like this one. I struggle finding stuff like this. Um, it doesn't show up, but yeah, I was proud, like, I was able to break in this attack when I could have just can, tried to keep taking pieces or other things I could have tried here, but this actually just immediately cracks the castle. So I was yeah. actually kind of proud to find this here. Yeah, that was good. That was, uh, that was a so, good. yeah, I see we have updated standings in the tournament. Um, yeah, what is, uh, what's the, I haven't marked, what's the, uh, well, what's the, what's the bracket no. here? So, oh, yeah, um, Foradun. Foradun. Oh, Foradun? I don't know. Yeah, Foradun, our tournament organizer, is advancing. Um, I thought the organizer was Synchro. Oh, I'm sorry, Synchro's our organizer. Yeah, you're right, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so Foradun is advancing here. Um, yep. We did see some comments in my chat describing, like, there was a misclick or something in this game that ended up being decisive. But yeah, um, the, the finals will be a best of three. We'll coordinate oh, some time to get that played. That'll be exciting. <laughs> oh, that'll be pretty good. Yeah. I, I, so you're like actually like, because like I am, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, t technically, I have been exposed to Shoki for like a year. But it's, but that's, depending, that was also the fact that, uh, we had to, when the ghost center shut down due to the old pandemic, I didn't get on 81 Dojo until like two days before the signups. <laughs> so, what's your, what's your like playing background? I have heard from 
I believe for both Nightlock and Time Zombie that you played like a million games. Yeah, well, so one thing is, like, I've live-streamed a lot of my gameplay, so, like, when I play games, people know about it. But, yeah, I've also uh, partaken in the teaching ladder uh, many different weeks. I did also play in, like, the Supernova tournament previously, so... Uh, even though that's predominantly people located in Japan, um, so kind of scheduling the playing hours to get the games played can sometimes be hard. But that was a fun tournament for players uh, to just get a lot of games played uh, against other uh, Q players. Um, ah, that's what I definitely need to do. I'm gonna get get my to get my reps in. I, I was just happy this game because I was just like. The two things uh, that I was really bad at is like historically is that I literally just couldn't get any openings to stick in my head. So I was like, oh no, I'm just gonna start shuffling pieces and it's gonna be a bad time for me. But uh, I felt like I got an attack now. Yeah, no, definitely got one. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm not so familiar with like static work opening play, but. Um, yeah, no, like, I remember seeing, I was watching, um, th what was it, the Road to Shodan series uh, on Shogi Harbor's uh, YouTube channel, um, and her uh, co-host, Wojtek, at one point, had out, just, uh, one point had pointed out that a static work opening theory changes a lot, and I'm like, well, I guess I know what I'm playing. And so I've been playing Swinging Rook openings ever since. Just, like, put the Rook on the left, build Mino Castle, and then just play a game. And that's how I've been doing it for a while. <laughs> My thing has just been, like, I didn't even know, because I didn't really know openings, so I, like, didn't really lock down my static Rook versus Ranger Rook. It just always kept being the thing that uh, I kept playing as, uh, kept playing as Black, and I kept just uh. advancing... The, the oh nice the three eight pawn and I'm like okay I guess that I guess I'm just a static rook. yeah that that's the one where you don't move the rook the pawn just moves out of the way and yeah I, don't, I haven't even like actually played a uh, a game with a ranging rook so yeah I still have to give that a so at least that's my 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 bias but yeah um uh, I know uh, I think she's starting to do lectures on some more. I forget what openings we're covering now, but yeah, it'd be f fun to get more and more opening theory of that sort covered because I'm not so familiar with it. But but yeah, uh, I guess the move order sometimes matters quite a bit with the static work stuff, and so I've tried to, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, uh, it's fun to get games played, and yeah. Yeah, that's good. Well, definitely, uh, definitely best of luck. Do you uh, do you uh, do you study, study up, up on your uh, on your opponent, or have the advantage of knowing most of the people so you know what they play? Uh, perhaps I should. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, that's interesting. Uh, so on eighty one dojo, if you just look at a player's profile page, uh, you can actually see they classify the player and say like this player tends to play this kind of opening. So it kind of does the research for you, but um, they'll tell you if they, they place. Go. Yeah. There's, your, there's uh, Lily's. Lily's got your your lead. Oh, let's see that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Uh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. There we go. We got. There's our strategy, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If I want to try it, that could be fun. Uh, yeah, this summer tournament is a good time to try stuff, so mm, that might happen. Uh, um, Alright, well, I will, uh, I'll leave you to it. Have a good rest of your stream. Uh, what? Uh, what? I, I, it's, it's probably just on the Shoki Harbor Discord, yeah? I should add you to the pile of, of uh, streams I need to be putting on my Twitch. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely hang out in there. Yeah. Nice. I'll go, go get you cool. hooked up. Have a good rest of it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, Bye. take care. Bye.
All right, yeah, I think that went pretty well. Sorry I missed so many written comments in this chat window. <laughs> yeah, 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 I see that, I see that. Uh, we'll see how that goes. No, if you really want to try to force us to do something, you've got to build a tournament and make it mandatory that you play this thing. Or, like, I don't know if there's even a way to do that, but yeah. Uh, that'd be one way to try to make the thing happen. But yeah, let's just pretend that I did the beautiful thing here, and yeah, I like this decoration better. Look at that. Seven pieces in a line. It's beautiful. Um, so we'll just say that that's... I, I actually found that or something. Uh, I found it after the game. But during the game it would be nice to find. Um, so, yeah. Um... Oh, I see. All right, best of luck to both players uh, with the third place match. Very cool. All okay, ah, the pawn takes line of the knight sacrifice. Yes, yeah, let's take a look. So when I drop this knight here, uh, they move the king, which was risky. Anything you can do here is risky. And during the game, I was trying to read this out, and maybe I didn't read it accurately, but I think what I said was I take here, and I guess they have a choice. They don't have to take the dragon, but I think it would be human nature to take the dragon, even though that seems to get checkmated. Um, but, yeah, I think... Here, they have to run the king. And I think this is still checkmate. It's not super obvious, but... Um, yeah, I think that's mate. So, it, it's a bit difficult to read. I didn't quite read that out to mate with the king running out here. I just saw, like, hey, if I, my dragon can take a gold general and get away with it. And if this is what they're attacking with, with just a knight in hand, I'm not too afraid of their counterattack, so I'm pretty sure I can make something work at this point if they're not taking my dragon. That's what I reasoned. So I thought, because if their king starts running out, I probably have something. I didn't quite read it all, but I have lots of pawns, lots of generals to do stuff. But yeah, what I read during the game was, here, I could give them a rook, and this isn't check, but I now cover all these squares. Um, so this gives me two threats. And I didn't think that they had any piece that could cover both of these squares at the same time. This is a nice little tactic. Um, so I think this, this is what makes the knight sacrifice uh, so powerful. And yeah, I think Zig uh, saw a good deal of this too. Uh, there was so much to see. Um, it's summer. We're all having fun uh, learning how to play Shogi better. But uh, So yeah, he bred enough to figure out that his king has to run now. And that follows the good general advice that uh, an early escape of the king does save, what, eight moves or something they say? But yeah, so he did apply the correct proverb here. Um, and yeah, in our post-mortem we were talking about what about this takes and found some lines there which are pretty interesting too. Um, but yeah, the, what it came down to is the sacrifice. So, yeah, I was proud to find this. This is a nice find, I think. I don't... I usually struggle to find such a thing. Here I had the time on my clock... Uh, so I did spend it... How long did I take on this? I don't see the time there, but... I took, like, a minute or something, I think, to find this night sack. Maybe even more. But I had the time to do it. So, that was fortunate. Yeah, I liked it. It was beautiful. So, I hope we all enjoyed this. It was a good game. And, uh, yeah, maybe I should study up a little for this, uh, finals, eh? We'll see what I can make time for. No promises.